here. And ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we have started another episode of Photoshop Party. Today we're going to do a follow-up to last week's program on Nick filters and actually go into a couple of the Nick filters and play with them a little bit and show you what they can do, including Vivesa, uh, Dynamic Skin Softener, Dark and Light and Center, and a couple others just to show you what they do. So Rule number one is we're going to have fun. If you have a question, feel free to shout it out. I don't watch the chat during these. Um, Kimberly, if you can keep an eye on that for me, I would appreciate it. And let's go ahead and get started. We'll share screen and just do the desktop so you can see where I'm going with everything. And I'm going to start with Adobe Bridge. And let's start with uh, Dynamic Skin Softener. This girl doesn't really need dynamic skin softener. Um, she's gorgeous to begin with, nice soft skin, but I'm gonna put it on her anyway, just to see how you can overdo it, but also how to tone it down as we do it as well. Um, so I'm gonna click on the Nick selection, selective tools, and I have presets that I love. I have my favorites up here. I got five favorites that I use on fairly regular basis, the filters. Um, you can go straight into Color Effects Pro and click on Dynamic Skin Softener, but it takes too long for me to find it. So what I do is just click on, whoops, my Photoshop just shut down. Wow, that was fun. Hope you guys are enjoying this because this never happens to you guys, right? Oh, never. Okay, Dynamic Skin Softener, I just click on it and it takes me straight into the filter. And I've got my Color Effects Pro set up so it goes full screen so I can see what I'm doing. Um, you can just click on OK and it will do some softening. And in her case, she's got average color skin for a white person so it will do average softening you can also yes i know that no don't send a report quit bugging me you can also click anywhere in the forehead or areas of color that you want to do after you click on this little icon on the right hand side where it says skin color there's a eyedropper right there you click on that and you can see my eyedropper in the middle of her forehead that's normally where i go is either the forehead or the cheeks click the color that i want to sample and it changes the skin color over here in the color box and then just click OK. I use the basic settings that they have in Photoshop. Really? Wow. Something's going on with my computer right now, as usual. But you can see that it took out every single pore, every single piece of skin that you wanted to keep, because it's running at 100%. All I have to do is change the opacity from 100. Probably for her, I'd run it at about 60%. And she has super soft skin. You notice I didn't retouch out the hair and all that stuff. I'm not worried about that right now. I just wanted to show you the skin softener um, filter. With image nomic portraiture, if you use that, you have to mask out the eyes, the nose, and the mouth, and anything you want sharp because it softens everything. With Dynamic Skin Softener, you pick out the color that you want to have softened. So we'll close this one, and we'll go back to Bridge. A little bit darker skin here, and a little bit ruddier skin. Um, if I was going to actually retouch him. I would do all the retouching first on his skin, his eyes, his teeth, take out all the zits, um, anything that, any skin imperfections I would take out most of them, and then run dynamic skin softener, but I'm not going to do that right now. I'm just going to run dynamic skin softener. Click on it again, 
na 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 and up in the upper right we have the zoom i'm going to zoom in on his face hold the space bar drag him down just like in photoshop click on my eyedropper in the upper right hand corner and i'm going to sample right in the middle of his forehead and you can see the comparison as I go in and out, you can see that just running the skin softener, a lot of the imperfections I don't have to worry about. And it definitely took out a lot of skin. With guys, I will run it at about 50 or 60%. So let's go ahead and change it to 50 on opacity for that layer. Zoom in just a little more. And you can see at 50%, it does one heck of a job. If I put it at 100%, it really takes out a lot. And it works really great for girls because they like that soft skin. You can definitely overdo it. Let me take it 100%. And then I'll run the filter one more time to show you how bad it can look. I had a girl one time, she wanted her skin to be super soft. So I ran the filter, I put it at 80%, which I don't do because it's too high. And she was not happy with it. So I ran it 100%, she wasn't happy. I ran it twice to where it's just porcelain skin like the magazines, and that's what she wanted. But you can see running it twice really didn't do a whole lot. So just running it once, was enough to kill it at 100%. And that's, I would not turn that over to a client because it's just way too soft. I would probably give it to them at probably 60% maybe. 50 or 60% would be perfect for that. It's just way too soft, especially for a guy. Guy's got to have some rugged skin in there. And I'm going to close that by hitting Command or Control W. Don't save. Say goodbye. Thank you. Go back to Bridge. I'll save this one for later. Let's get into Viveza. Viveza is kind of cool. I'll open that up, make it full screen, Command Zero. And we'll go into Viveza. Viveza, you can do everything like this in Photoshop. You can do it in Lightroom. You can do it in Adobe Camera Raw. But Viveza is really cool. I'm going to click on this lime green balloon in the middle of the image. So let's make, zoom in one time. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to the upper right hand corner. It says add control point. So if I click on add control point and I click on that green, I can control the size of the control point. So let's see. Wow, it doesn't want to let me click on it. Only when you're doing programs does it do mess with you like this, but we'll just make it that size. I don't care. Um, what color would you like that balloon to be? You want to go with red? Hearing everybody say yes, let's go with red. Sure, why not? Sure, why not? <laughs> okay, I'm going to crank up the red all the way to the stops, which is 100%. I'm going to crank the green down, and now it's red. However, my size is way too big because it's affecting the other balloons and I can't get it to Wow. What other balloons is it affecting? Are you talking about the green one above it? The green one above it. Isn't if that I can... a reflection though? But if I can get the um the point on here, the control point, well, let's just do this. 
let's add a control point right there. Now I'm supposed to be able to control the control points and it's not allowing me to click on them. Let me get out of, oh, if I was smart, I would know what I was doing. I had the zoom tool clicked on it, which won't allow me to zoom in. So let's do this. Let's delete this one. It's on there and go down to delete. It's gone. Now I have my pointer again. So I'll click on that control point and let's make it smaller. So it just affects that balloon. And I could take it up and do the top balloon by holding the Alt or Option key and dragging it. And then making the control point just a little bit bigger. Or I hit Control Z to get rid of everything, or Command Z. Go back to this control point and I can click on the right hand side where it says Control Point 1. Go down here and hit click on Duplicate and drag this bad boy up there to that one as well. Make it just a little bit bigger. And we can get rid of any blue, make it really red. You can also change the hue by dragging it right and left. So if I want to make it, say a purple balloon, just by dragging the hue slider, across, you can do that as well. You can adjust warmth on here. Um, you can do it either in the menu on the right-hand side of Viveza, or you can do it from the sliders in Viveza. So you can adjust brightness, and if I take the brightness down here, you can see it took the brightness down in the menu, and vice versa. If I bring it back up, you can do that. Um, it's great for controlling color. Let's do another control point. Add a control point. Click on the yellow. And when I clicked on the yellow, it also took rid of, got rid of all the red that was coming from these two balloons and the purple and turn it to straight yellow. So what we'll do is we'll take the hue and play with it a little bit take down blue, which I think is the opposite of yellow. Take down red. And just play with it. I mean, it's, this is something you can go into a, um, a landscape and change all your colors. You can make the sky much brighter. You can do all kinds of stuff with a Vesa. Um, I have that purple balloon. Let's get rid of that one. So we'll add a new control point and it ended up over here. I don't want it there, I want it here. Thank you very much. Oh, the reason why it turned up over there is because that was a control point for the yellow balloon that I turned purple. I need to add a control point. Make it smaller. And we're going to bump the saturation like to the moon, take out all the red, add a whole bunch of blue. And structure doesn't really matter because that's more sharpening or anything else. Bump a little bit. And you can see that this blue is bleeding onto the white balloon behind it. So if I just add a control point on the white balloon, what that does is say, I don't want anything done to this control point until I make the changes. So if I wanna hit option or alt and drag it over to the silver, so all the colors go out of the silver and make sure that there's no contamination there. Um, same thing on the right hand side, we'll go over here get rid of the contamination. Um, you can control your control points 
and make photos or make Nick filters work for you. So we'll take off the preview, turn to preview back on. You can see the difference between the what we've done. So if I wanted to, I could go in and make every balloon purple instead of the colors that they were. This was shot at the PPA convention in Atlanta a couple years ago. And yeah, some crazy people, they're having a good time. I don't know who it was, but so I'll hit cancel and close this out. Close, don't save. And again with the Vesa, let's go ahead and well, I'm not even going to zoom in. I'm going to go over and you'll notice there's a blue tint to the what should be white right here. So if I take the saturation out of it, make it a little bit bigger, make it a little bit brighter, I can almost make that white without even adjusting the blue out of it. And the caterpillar that was there is still the same color he was before the control points are added or before we change the color of that. He stays the same because it only picks the colors that you want to do. So if I add a control point to his yellow right here, click so I can adjust this down. And we're going to add a whole lot of saturation and take out the warmth. So he goes yellow. And then we'll click on his red. Make it a little bit smaller so it's just him. We'll add some saturation. Add some red. Click OK. And all I have to do is click the eyeball for Viveza. Viveza, like any other Nick filter, will add it, add a layer to it. You can see that the white is actually whiter than the original. It's not blue. And the colors on him, especially the red, tend to pop a whole lot better. So that's Viveza in a quick one two punch. Don't save. And we will go to Silver Effects Pro. Let me open up both of these. This is the original shot. I had a guy that wanted an old time look of downtown Lompoc that he could hang in his restaurant. So you'll notice this is not old town. This is current. Got the usual person sitting on the bench. You've got traffic lights. You've got cars. So there's a little bit of photoshopping to be done. Took out the trash can. Took out the street sign there. The pole with the lights on it. Close that. And that's what we finish with in color. And I offered him an old, old look or a semi-old look and gave him the choice of what he wanted. And he wanted just straight black and white, of course. So let me get rid of those. And we'll go to Silver Effects Pro. Has anybody not played with Silver Effects Pro? Is there anybody that hasn't played with it before? Been a long time. Been a long time, okay. Um, when you open up Silver Effects Pro, normally it will open with all of the filters available. And I'll drag down on my slider here, and you can see that there are plenty of filters to give you different looks. Lots and lots and lots of filters. I have about seven favorites that I use, and to wait a the way to make favorites show up in the favorites box up here on the upper left hand corner is to click on the star next to the name. 
So you can see that natural, 000, zero, zero natural, is, has a star highlighted. The underexposed does not. I don't like the look of underexposed very well. It just doesn't work for me that much. Um, so I've got my favorites. So I'll click on my favorites box up here and I've got seven. I've got neutral, high structure, harsh, high structure, smooth, full dynamic, harsh, full dynamic, smooth. I have fine art process, which is a really cool one, especially for people. Soft sepia are the ones that I use on a regular basis. You can also go into vintage if you want to try to make it look old. It's got the dark sepia, soft sepia, cool tone, ugly looking old, cool tones, film noir. You got yellowed, yellowed two, antique plate, antique plate two, and pinhole. So I'm just going to go back to my favorites. He wanted a black and white. So what I did was actually I gave him the high structure harsh. That's one of my favorite ones that I like to use. And all you have to do is click on it and it's good to go. Or you can add control points. You could add color filters. If you've by looking at some of the gray hair out there, including mine, you may have worked in a black and white lab and you used a red filter, green filter, yellow filter. Well, you can do the same thing here, clicking on these yellow dots. Can you all see that or is that hidden? The colored dots right here. We can see it. Okay, good. Because on my screen, it shows um, a bunch of people that are hiding behind their masks. And you just put your filter on that you want to do. That makes it look like almost daylight. And that changes the, the color tone. So I would go with the red filter. You can change film types. If you want the peat look, you go get your 400 T-Max. Click on T-Max. Now you have the peat Rezac look. If you want to add more grain, you can add more grain per pixel or less grain per pixel. Actually, okay, more grain per pixel is less grain in the picture. And you can go hot, hot, hard, or soft grain, depending how you like it, and pick out the grain. I'm not even gonna really mess with the grain so much. So I'll take the grain back up there. Sensitivity. Um, you can adjust all that as well. And then levels and curves. If you like playing with levels and curves, you have it here. And finishing adjustments. Toning, vignette, turn your vignette on. You can turn from a little bit of fall off all the way up to wow. And the same with white, black, or off. You can do toning if you want to add different colored toning, like sepia tones, selenium, split tone, neutral. You can do all that stuff in here. Image borders, you can add borders to it. Type 12, okay? We'll go with the type 12 border. And there we go, that's our black and white image we just developed. So that's Silver Effects Pro in 30 seconds or less almost, almost. So Michael, where are you getting those black and whites printed and how are they doing with it? I do 99.9% .9 of my printing through Miller's. Miller's Professional Imaging will print black and white. They will print pure black and white on black and white paper, or you can run it through their color and do the um, black and white through color as well.
Okay, cool. Yeah, it's Miller's Rocks. I don't know if anybody notices when I say this, but I love Miller's. Um, here's an image that I wanted mostly his eyes to show. So I put on two dark and light and center filters. So let's do this. I'll take both of these and drag them to the trash. Say goodbye filters. And we'll just run through it again. So on my favorites down here, I have dark and light and center. And the way to get the favorites on all of your color effects pro, again, all you have to do is click on the um, star next to the filter that you like, and it goes in to your favorites panel. With color effects pro and all of these, you have control points where you can turn them on and off the areas that you don't want it to work. Um, Larry talked about using the uh, shape, either like a square rectangle or oval. I kind of like the oval myself, but in this case, I'm going to use the rectangle to work on this case. Um, the center luminosity, I don't want his eyes to be super bright yet. Yes, I do. I changed my mind. Border luminosity, you can bring it way down. And you can bring the center size. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. You can bring your center size down. So it's just his eyes that are showing. So let's take it to the extreme. Border luminosity all the way down. Center luminosity. Just to the point where you like it. Center size. And we're down to just his eyes showing. And then click OK. And you can see the difference here. And I'm going to darken it down one more time just for fun. So darken light and center. It's in my favorites. Border luminosity down a little bit. I'm going to bring the center luminosity down just a hair. Center size down so it's mostly his eyes showing. And then click OK. It's just that easy. And if you look at before and go to after. And that's before we did anything to retouch his eyes or make him pop out more. That's dark and light and center. And I use dark and light and center on a lot of my images to vignette. Um, and you can control the vignette that way really easy. In fact, let's cancel that. Drag that one to the trash. Drag that one to the trash. We'll run dark and light and center just to run a vignette on him really quick. And I'm not even going to make any adjustments on their settings. And you can see just a light vignette. It lightens the inside of a little bit. And it darkens the outside just a little bit. And if you don't want the inside lit up like it did, Add a mask and get a brush. And we're going to paint with black. So we want to exchange colors to black. And you can see the change that it did lighting the face up. So if I mask, undo the mask, you can see it's brighter. Turn the mask back on. And it's a little bit darker. So, questions on that? Wow. Either you're asleep or I'm doing better than I thought it was. We're awake. Okay, good to hear. At least I am. <laughs> okay, I shot this at the. Atlanta Aquarium, and I had a small camera with me, so I have a lot of noise in there. And using Define 
first I did remove color cast and then I did define which changed the color a little bit and then also softened up the noise that's in there. So let's go ahead and start over on this. And you can see we have some noise in there. And we also want to make sure the color cast is removed. So you have remove color cast is one of my favorites right here on the right hand side. So I click on remove color cast. Open, 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 open. And you can change the color cast just by dragging the slider and it changes in degrees. So I took it probably three quarters of the way over there. And let me zoom in really quick. And you can see that there's a bit of a difference and go to compare. That was the original. That's the change. It shows up a whole lot better on my 32 inch monitor than it does on my laptop. But you can see there is a bit of a change there. And just click OK. You can also change the strength if you want. So you can drag your strength slider over or back. And you can see the changes that it does as you're doing that. And click OK. Then you have before and after before and after. And then I'm going to go into define because there is a lot of grainage in there. So let's go ahead and click on define two. And it's working, working, working. And click OK. And it actually didn't do a whole lot of difference there. I guess I didn't have enough grain to, to worry about it. Let me try running it one more time just to see if I didn't make a mistake, which sometimes I may do. You can change from automatic to manual and tell it where you want to go to check for grain. Then measure noise. Click OK. And that went way, way too soft. So nope, I do not like that. It doesn't always work perfect, but when it does work, it is really cool. But the remove color cast definitely worked very well that time warmed it up a lot more. Command W, don't save. And we'll do one more. This one should work for define. You can see there is a little bit of grain in there or noise as it's called today. Automatic profile taken in this time. Define before and after. And again, go to the remove color cast because it's got a little bit of a blue tint to it. Drag your slider over to the color you like. Okay. You have before, after. You can always change it again, or you can run it through Viveza, whatever you want to do. One of the things with Nick filters that you will find is you will get these lines along edges showing up when you use some of the filters. So you got to be careful about that. Um, I have seen that on quite a few of my images when I use Nick filters to try and bump something up, it will 
do that as well. Some of the filters I haven't played with are Analog Effects Pro. I have got no idea what that does. So let me click on it. So Mike, that blue line you showed, is that, do you know which filter that's coming from? Um, oh, let's take a look. You, yeah, two different ones. Can you tell that it start right away? Actually, it appears to be from my original. I take that back on uh, Nick Filters. That was actually my original that had that. Time Unless, to put your cell phone away. Um, that was my cheap camera. It was a Canon. Had I had well, my Nikon, had I had my Nikon, it wouldn't have happened. But on my on the Canon, that's what happened. So. Okay, Analog Effects Pro. You can go in and select the type of camera that you like, um, and it tries to uh, reenact your camera's film. Oh, wow, that's a pretty cool color. Classic camera. You got motion pictures. Whoa. Okay, that's not what I was expecting out of that one. old school color cast and wasted yeah. film. But you can go in, you just go in and play with it and have a good time. You want to add some noise and crud to your to your slide to make it look like the original stuff that you've had before. You can do double exposures, which is, I don't know why you'd want to, but you could, um, but you can just go in and play with it and do what you want. So um, those are some of the Nick filters. There's probably, I couldn't even tell you how many filters there are in ColorFX Pro. I could go down and count them, but I know Christy Elias likes bleach bypass. It makes things darker. Um, and also more mysterious. She'll talk about that when she does her program next Tuesday. Um, so that takes care of a quick lesson on Nick filters. Here's the dog has a question. Can somebody translate for me? Okay. <laughs> Is it a squirrel? 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 Where's the squirrel? Yeah. Um, any questions out there? I'd be happy to answer them. So which version of the DxO Nix uh, filters are you on right now? Version 2? I am on Define 2, Viveza 2, Color Effects Pro. Yeah, so yeah, version 2. Okay, I just noticed I have version 1 still. I upgraded to version two when uh, they were free on Google. So that was a good investment. I think, I don't know, the version three now or four. I know there's a, there is an upgrade since I've done it and I don't want to pay the money for it, but I know, consider how much money I've paid for all these filters to begin with. Um, it was probably close to a thousand dollars and Nick filters from the beginning when they first came out to the last update I did because back in the day they cost a, a chunk of change. Any other questions? Going once, going twice. Well, thank you folks. There will not be a program on Thursday, but there will be a program next Tuesday. We'll have Christy Elias come in and talk about uh, doing composites. So you definitely don't want to miss that one. Christy um, awesome. is awesome. She rocks. Christy is fantastic. You want to be there for that one. So it'll be next Tuesday, 1 o'clock. We'll send out an invite to everybody. And you're more than welcome to share these. As long as we keep it under 100 people, we're good to go. Thanks, Michael. Uh, thank you, guys. Thanks for being here. Thanks, awesome. Mike. Thank you, Michael. Have a great day. All right. We'll talk to you later. Stay safe. You guys all be safe and 
keep your head down. 